and they are taking an off ramp and all of a sudden the person driving this just feels this huge ka-chung and the left side of the car like hops up in the air like a foot and so they call the police and what they ended up learning is that there's this new like robbery scam happening in Los Angeles. I don't know if it's happening elsewhere. Like, did you know where in, where in town? Was it in town or was it out in like the desert? Folks, today's episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast is brought to you by Banks Power, creators of the all new Pedal Monster. It's got a funny name, but a very serious purpose. In fact, if you get an ECU tune in your car, an aftermarket ECU tune, while in some cases it does actually add power, in a lot of cases what it does is it reprograms your throttle pedal so it feels like you're getting more power with a new pedal map. Well, that's what the pedal monster does. It's just more honest about it. It instantly improves the throttle response in hundreds of cars and trucks. The pedal monster is the only OBD connected throttle controller, meaning it doesn't sap voltage from your throttle itself. That sounds complicated, but trust me, it is important. Each mode of the Pedal Monster, City, Sport, and Track, has 10 unique throttle maps for a total of 30 sensitivity levels, and you can change between them on the fly. The patented reverse safety system returns your pedal to the stock throttle map when you put the car into reverse. You wouldn't want your car being jerky or overly responsive when you're backing up. No, of course you wouldn't. So that's why reverse safety helps. And the adjustable speed trim allows you to remove added pedal sensitivity below 10 miles an hour and leave it in, you could leave it in an aggressive mode, but not jerk your trailer off idle or not have a, a, a rough takeoff in a manual transmission car. The pedal monster is a very smart, they've really thought of everything. And what I was saying about that OBD, it's a 12 volt power from the OBD, not a five volt pedal circuit like their competitors. The competitors Competitors, they draw from the five volt pedal circuit, which can cause pedal failure. You can overload that circuit. In the event of an internal or external malfunction, the Pedal Monster's active safety system returns your system to stock. It's got an easy to use, well integrated iPhone and Android app. And to find out if it works for you, all you have to do is go to bankspower.com. That's banks power.com enter the year make and model of your car to find out if it fits and how to order one for yourself go to bankspower.com and learn about the pedal monster and if it works for your car today we're also brought to you by Berryman Products. We love Berryman Products. They make high quality chemicals for your car. And today we're talking about the non chlorinated Chem Dip Professional Parts Cleaner. You know, it's no secret that car parts get dirty and some way more so than others. Thankfully, Berryman has a solution non chlorinated Chem Dip Professional Parts Cleaner. Berryman's Chem Dip can quickly dissolve carbon, gum, varnish, Varnish, fuel residue, and other deposits from carburetors and other parts in 15 to 30 minutes without heat, agitation, or aeration. ChemDip is formulated with an optimized blend of non chlorinated solvents to safely clean all types of metal, including steel, aluminum, and alloys, and other. Uh, unlike other parts cleaners on the market, Chem Dip has a mild, pleasant odor. You can find Berryman non chlorinated Chem Dip professional parts cleaner and many other Berryman products at all major automotive retailers. Berryman is all American made since 1918. And for more information, go to BerrymanProducts.com. Calm. Last but certainly not least, brought to you by Rex MD, baby. Guys hate going to the doctor. It can take half a day. You got to get your parking validated, make appointments well in advance, talk to those nurses up at the front desk. And also, you might not want to talk to your doctor about certain issues. Here's the thing most men's health issues have very simple solutions, and Rex MD is all about that. Rex MD makes getting generic and branded Viagra or Cialis easy. 
Everything is online, even the prescription, and they deliver to your door. No office visits, no talking to a receptionist. Super, super simple. Did you know Viagra can cost 90 bucks a pill? But RexMD has generic Viagra for as low as just $2 a pill. So fill out the quick medical questionnaire on their website. A doctor reviews your situation and will prescribe you generic Viagra if appropriate. The medication gets shipped right to your door with free two-day shipping. It's fast, simple, and cheap, and you can access your U.S. licensed RexMD physician anytime you need afterwards. RexMD has helped over 30,000 guys get generic Viagra quickly and conveniently. RexMD just works, and it works on the very first night. So, starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available for our listeners, but you've got to go to rexmd.com slash tire to get started. That's rexmd.com slash tire. Go to rexmd.com slash tire to get started with a starter pack prescription of generic Viagra or Cialis, free two-day shipping, and RexMD is the authority on men's health. All right, folks, today it's a crew show. Zach and I are in studio. We're talking about an update on our BMW 135i project car. He drove the Ram Rebel truck. I drove the Lamborghini Huracan Technica on track in Palm Springs. We saw Luftkegelt. I'm going to bring you a post-show wrap-up about that. And some crazy shit went down on the 110 freeway, causing cops to shut the whole thing down and me getting a front row seat because I was on a Vespa. It's a crew show on the Smoke and Tire podcast. Great. Great. Good. Great. Grand. Wonderful. Yeah. Welcome to the program, everybody. Hello. My (laughs) name is Matthew. I'm your host. We'll be going over the differences in printers today. Oh, man. HP versus Microsoft. I prefer the M281 series laser printer because it it does 50 color pages per minute as opposed to to the, the brother. It only does 47 color pages per minute. But the brother has a better resolution. I just... Quality over quantity. I... <laughs> We just did a lot of printing, actually. We went yeah. to, we <laughs> yeah, our new house we made, it. we're having like a, we're trying to be very neighborly, at the mm. new house. And so we're having like a bit of an open house kind of thing, like a Sunday champagne, strawberries, like, hey, neighbors, come see what we did to this house cool. kind of thing. So we made, we printed up little invites and uh, walked around the neighborhood, putting them in people's mailboxes. And Hannah was like, should we spend the money to print them in color? And I was like, if we make black and white, like like grayscale, it's gonna be, it's gonna seem a little shanty. Mm, so, yeah. so so we spent, we spent 34 cents a color copy. I don't know how much it is, but we printed in color. Printed them in color. 80, 80, 80 printouts in color, which is, I think it's a lot of color prints. For a home printer, that's it's like a lot. Yeah, it, it got its uh, you got its its money worth. It really cleaned the jets on the on the laser jet it's printer. All warm really afterwards, blew it all. It's like the Italian tune-up laser jet <laughs> printers. Uh, it's been a it's been a long weekend for for me. Lots of car shit because there was Luft Luft Kigot this weekend, and so there's the there's you see there's the pre Luft, right? There's the gatherings. Everyone comes mm. to town for Luft, and then it's about all the different activities. This car show is so crazy. You're gonna have to go to your own Instagram because I took no photos oh. at Luft. Right. So you can go to the, the the Zach Clapman Instagram, the real Zach Clapman. We don't plug that enough, but Zach took some photos and everyone else took plenty of photos. But like, well, I love Luft. It's a great, great show, but it's just crazy that it's become a whole weekend of shit. Right. There's like there's pre luft no, there drives is. and parties and cars and coffees and the, I've never personally seen anyone else scalping tickets for a car show before. Like I've never even heard, at yeah. fucking Pebble Beach. Like I've never seen someone standing at the entrance to Pebble Beach. Like I got two over here. Someone's doing that? Oh yeah. Wow. Straight scalping. That. Oh my gosh. Not to mention all the fucking DMs I got, you know, that were either like 
I need tickets. Where do I get them? And I've got tickets to sell. Do you know anyone who needs them? Wow. Like, like well, they, they limit uh, the number of people that can go in. They right? do to try yeah. and like, keep it yeah. intimate and not too jammed. Yeah, and okay. if more people were there, it would have been not. I mean, it was already mildly shit show. You know, it felt busy. Yeah, it was it definitely did. busy. And so whoever picked the number of tickets, that was the right number. Yeah, but like. We're scalping tickets wow. to car shows in San Pedro now. That's <laughs> like, how big Luft is. I mean, yeah. That's how popular. It is like a destination, like a cultural destination because of its focus on, you know, air-cooled Porsches. And, like, I had friends that were going to travel, you know, 400 miles to come yeah. to it because they're into the cars. And it's curated. I mean, it, it is different. More than, like, just the cars. Like, I don't think this particular picture is the right the I right picture. I just to show, like, the was crowd. Busy. That was, like, and that was the beginning of the morning. So. Yeah. But it's... It, the fact that, you know, Jeff and Pat do a really, really great job, but mm -hmm. the fact that it's set up by a director and photographer, you know, it, it, it he basically is setting up each section as if he was going to shoot an advertisement there, but then he doesn't take the shot. He lets you take the shot. Right. So each corner of it is set up in a visually interesting way that makes for very photographic. I mean, even the quail, even Pebble Beach Concourse, even Amelia Island, even the Audrain, like even the biggest car shows, the most prestigious car shows just aren't set up like this. It's no. not thought out. It's usually just what section is this? Yeah. And then put the cars a, a certain distance away. Yeah. But here there's, there's spaces like, look, there's a gold Porsche. I mean, there's, there were no, no other cars around it for like there's good, there's good spacing. So there's, space. there's they're on multiple dimensions. There's cars up high. There's cars right. down low. They build, you know, they built like a gravel pit that was raised up like a foot to put three cars in. They had ca some cars on risers and some cars on ramps and some cars, you know, it was like on the loading docks and some cars right. on the ground. I think they hung. It, there were some really new looking pallets inside. Yeah. I think they like cordoned off a you know what was basically like a giant barn area yeah, they and did. they broke it up into sections which yeah. is nice yeah, yeah so it's they cool. they it's it's thought through more vi visually and there's it's now very trendy like in LA especially to have these co sort of museums or exhibits whatever you want to call them but they're it's basically like a series of instagrammable moments where you can put like there's like the ice cream museum in LA which is pretty corny but like it's basically like you get to put yourself and take a selfie in a in a like a bunch of ice yeah. cream themed like it started scenarios. with wings being spray painted on the side of right buildings. right right yeah. yes that it's yeah. that it's the equivalent this is the car equivalent of wings on a building but because you have the cars, there's a little more to it. Yes, I think there's more substance to this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's also, like, food and the brewery thing. And, like, and you just think about most most car shows are either at a parking lot or a field. Those mm -hmm. are those are pretty much your options for car shows. And, and if you're lucky, maybe the field is on some kind of a hill so it looks sort of cool. But, like, with this, it's like you've got industrial, you've got indoor, you've got outdoor, you've got – you know the the risers. You've got the pallets. You've got this uh, keen safari parked like under a tree, mm -hmm. like in, in sort of probably somewhere that if it's I owned that place, I might not be happy that they parked a car there. But but um, it's it was a, a and and sometimes the color of the car matched like what was around it. Like right. if you go back, there was like a ye the the roof yellow bird, which kind of matched right there. Yeah, yeah. The yellow stripe on the concrete right. below it. Like they just did little visual tricks so that you have a lot of opportunities to take really cool photos. And I think that's um, what sets this show apart from yeah. other shows. Even if they had Porsches or if they had you know, a bunch of exotics or something like that. It just does feel like you are have arrived at kind of a temporary museum. Yeah. And it's really fun. Yeah. And they do a good job of making sure the most interesting colors are displayed. Like all the silver and black cars were like shoved to one yeah. like side. They were just outside like line up, you know, yeah. line up over there. Yeah. yeah. Like the really good stuff, the bright, really bright, fun colors were, were in the curated section. Um, which was cool. Mm -hmm. um, I did a live podcast with Spike. It went 
okay. It where, was, where was it? If uh, you go, go. You have a photo of it right in front of where that the the Jewish Racing Gold 993 Turbo was, which was one of my favorite cars that of the whole thing show. Was so cool looking. That it's yeah. Oh, the whole picnic area. The, okay. Like are we our 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 show was literally up on that high level. It was oh, wow. not a great right. place for okay. a show. It was the sunny side of the thing, and if we were on the other side, it would have been 25 Here. degrees cooler. It was Kinda really hot, yeah, up gotcha. there. Okay, uh, we we were cooking, um, and it's tough, you know, doing a podcast. I'm. It was a fine show, but like, and it was cool that we got to do one there, but like outdoors, not good for a live podcast, and non captive audience not good for a live podcast granted like the people who were sitting in front of the stage were clearly there to see it but like other people are walking through with beers and like people were just like walking right up to the stage and shoving phones in our face and like taking pictures like not optimal for that kind of thing mm -hmm. i was glad that it wasn't the smoke entire podcast <laughs> I was glad all I had to do was show up and be handed a microphone and say some things. Someone else ran all the cables. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, stuff, like, yeah. it's, you know, whether it was great or not great or the ultimate sound quality or whatever, just not my problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> I showed up and talked. That was what I was asked to yeah, do. Yeah, it's not an amphitheater, but um, it's, you know, it's a cool thing they've added at least. I don't know. I wonder if they're going to keep growing this to, like, there's more entertainment. That well, are, it, you know, it does add depth. Yeah. But, like, in the future, I think if we had a – a section of the indoor area mm -hmm. that maybe had some pallets that kind of blocked it off, maybe even some like chairs that kind of indicated like this is the audience and then everyone else can I agree with that. Yeah. be over there. I think that, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to like bite the hand that feeds me. Actually I wasn't fed. I didn't no one paid me shit. <laughs> Just saying how it was. Yeah. Like, but uh yeah, open air is is tough. You know, there's they're playing music on the other side. You kinda gotta fight that. Um but it was still it was still an, an all right show from a from a content uh wise uh thing. But I, I really enjoyed it. I thought they did a fantastic job. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously not every element is always going to be perfect. Get the Getting in and getting out. I rode a motorcycle, so I had no problem with anything. But uh, I heard the traffic I heard was a little tough. I, I bet if, you, if people came in, you know, at peak time or left when the whole show ended, mm -hmm. I mean, there were a lot of people there, a lot of cars. And the drive, you know, I think the parking lot Corey and I parked in, which is like the media early parking lot, it had one entrance, one outlet. Yeah. So, you know, it would pack pack up. But but that's why you ride motorcycles, these kinds of things. Yeah. You Once the traffic stopped on the highway, like you just zip past us on the yeah. Vespa, like he wins. He wins. Oh, did you did you get stuck in the stop traffic? Yeah. You you rode past us. And oh. I, I have video of you sitting at the front of the traffic oh, break yeah. that the police officer made. Did you it, see why we were stopped? No. Oh, I did. Uh -uh. Did I not tell you why mm -hmm. we were stopped? Oh. <laughs> there was a half naked woman running on the highway running on the fucking highway and when i got there they were fucking chasing this bitch and they caught her and fucking put her in the back of the cop car wow yeah yeah i thought it was a traffic you know the cop yeah, weaved no. a traffic yeah they break. weaved to slow it down and 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 to stop and sometimes you know there's a fucking mattress on the road or some yeah. dumb thing and they got to clear the road off right and that's why they do that wow. No, there was a fucking half naked woman running down the highway. Had no idea. Yeah, I was, I was a thousand feet back from you, but we had zero idea. <laughs> yeah, I saw two guys riding uh, tricycles <laughs> on the four hundred five the other day. Like they, like they wanted. You mean like, like bicycles? Tr bicycles. Uh, bicycles. Like they, like a bicycle that you know, like the kind you like a little kid's Santa tricycle. Monica, no, the kind of Santa Monica like you'd hitch a ride on and you can pay them like five bucks. Oh, like a pedicab? Yeah, a pedicab. Oh my but god! But for some reason they hadn't looked at. Google Maps that says, yeah, you can get from that exit to the next exit on a surface street. So they were just on the shoulder. In a pedicab? Two of them in a row. Holy and, shit. You guys are out of your mind. That's fucking yeah, crazy. These cars are going 80 miles an hour. Yeah. I, you know, I, it's very funny, like, uh, when you're, <laughs> when you're, like, riding, a, like, I, you know, I, I rode my fucking Vespa uh, down there. And, you know, it, 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 it can max out at like 80, 82, 85 miles an hour, but I, I cruise at 75. That's about as fast mm -hmm. as I really go on that thing. I like to have a little left in it yeah. if I have to. So I don't like to cruise at top, top speed. And like, you know, I'm getting passed by cars. It's like early in the morning on a Saturday. There's, there's no one really on the road. And so cars are going 80, 85, because that's what the speed people drive here when the roads are empty. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, it is inevitable 
traffic will come to a stop and I will have my vengeance. <laughs> and then yep. I pa- and I pass 400 cars that are fucking stopped and now actually it was really nice as soon as the cops cleared out I was like and I fucking zing the fuck out of my I enjoyed 5 miles of totally open highway. Wide open throttle. That was Vespa. great. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, but really enjoyable show. Uh, the lesson this year, get your fucking tickets ahead of time. Don't wait until yeah. the last day. Get the ticket, your ticket the day it goes on sale, and then you don't have to worry about it. I agree. Yeah. Or get yourself a job in automotive journalism. Or you can do that. Get a, media, get know, a media pass. Take a pay cut, but get a job in automotive media. Yeah. And then- uh, I'll put together a little smoke and tire uh, gift pack, and I'll, I'll give away my media pass And if you try to reuse it next year. That's, I was thinking, I was on the way out, I was like, if I see someone like hanging on the fence, like a little kid or something, yeah, that I, I would give them too. my badge. But there was there was no. Everyone in line had a ticket. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Um, allegedly, I wasn't really going to do that. The kid will take photos. He'll yeah. put it on Instagram or TikTok or whatever yeah. the kids use. But uh, but it was enjoyable, and then uh, and uh, a lot of a lot of people were in town that I that are not normally in town. And our pal, I went to our pal Pete Brotman's birthday party last night, which is why I'm a little. Hungover still. I'm gonna. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, we we drank a lot last night. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna not drink for like ten days, maybe. I think until I go on this road and track thing, because then there's a whole wine tasting. Element oh, to I was gonna say you could do sober October, but well, it's too late. It's October tenth. Well, you could jump sober in late, twenty you know? days. You could I, show up in the in the third inning. <laughs> like he's back. Yeah. No, I, I I think I'll do a week. I feel kind of like. Gross, hungover, and like kind of bloated. Mm-hmm. Like I need to like. Un- it, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to Pilates three days this week. So that'll that that and a week of not drinking should probably undo some of that feeling. I didn't drink. Uh, well, I'm going on, I'm going to Italy tomorrow for the Ferrari 296 GTS launch. What? It's on the calendar, bro. You are. You got awesome. invited and you said I'm out of town, but Zach that didn't rules. go. <laughs> yeah. Am I out of town? <laughs> you were. Something's going on. I think was I supposed to be out of town? Well, yeah. that rules. Good for yeah. you. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's too bad I but said I'll be I, drinking. It's too bad I. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you're going. Yeah, me too. But. That's cool. <laughs> I forgot. Completely forgot. Yeah. The, when do uh, you come back? Friday at like 1 p.m. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, I'll have to set up the podcast with Salik on my own, I guess. Oh, That's I thought that was you going on someone else's show. Let I don't know, Salika Talbot. Yeah, unless I get through customs faster than anybody's Ooh, ever maybe got I should customs. try to move it a little later. If you move it an hour, then it what would are the work. odds your flight back from Italy? Is it a direct flight back? You uh, going straight? No, it's Where from. You, you don't have to change in Charles de Gaulle, do you? Frankfurt. Okay, that's better. Yeah, Frankfurt's yeah, Frankfurt's okay. I read a uh, an article, and I think it it was unclear if it was real or not, but it said that Lufthansa was not allowing. Uh, people to put air tags they're they were attempting to ban air tags because people were shaming them on social media by where their lost bags oh were that's the funny gun, which is really that funny that is not how you solve that problem no obviously but wow. I, I don't uh, someone claimed uh alex roy shared the article and someone claimed it was fake news i'm not it's funny uh i don't know if it's true or not so please don't hold me to as a news source there. that would but be really funny it would be funny especially because lufthansa's who lost my bags in on the way to scotland and that's who and that's who uh that's the reason my parents now own six air tags because of that um anyway uh update on the bmw 135i giveaway yes. car of course to enter uh the giveaway it's go.getentertowin.com slash tst or you can go to our uh tst instagram uh page and click the link in our bio that will take you straight there uh you can buy a mug or do a series of hoops that you have to jump through to enter for free mm-hmm. um but uh, we really recommend the mug. Not going to lie. You'll get more use out of the mug than you, you can't, will mailing something you in. You cannot drink out of a mailed 3x5 uh, card. No. Nope. Unless you're like Bear Grylls maybe. But like, but you're sending the card sending away. The card so away, you so. no longer have the envelope from which to drink. True. Yeah. yeah. So we really recommend buying uh, the mug. It's got my dumb fucking face on it taking a selfie making the stupid YouTuber face. Um, so, as well as a... Well, that's a 1M, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, the idea is that we uh, are building the best Canyon car for $30,000. Uh, in actuality, there's 
quite a bit more than thirty thousand going into it because yeah. the uh, the the parts that we've gotten uh, from some of our partners on the project um, from from Cobb with the access port, the sway bars, the carb legal tune, uh, carb legal uh, charge pipe, metal charge pipe. We've got the uh, uh, the Motul. Uh, fluids, engine yep. trans diff brake fluid. We've got the ST coilovers. We've got uh, what the fuck else do we have? I probably should have uh, prepared. Air filter. The green filter, air filter. Brakes, yep. bra uh, rotors and pads. Yep. Brand uh, new BMW M Sport uh, rotors and pads with that high temp Motul brake fluid. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also replaced a bunch of worn parts just with OEM fresh stuff. There were a couple like bushings and um, some other just little knickknacks and links that right. they wanted to fix. Right. Our uh, our wrenching partners at Avis Autosport in Glendale, California, BMW experts. Um, we had them go through the car. It, uh, the, I, I said I, I've said before we're have them do the hundred thousand mile service. Apparently, that's not really how it works. There isn't a quote hundred thousand mile service. They have to. You know, they replace and inspect things as needed, mm -hmm. um, which they did. They did the carbon, the, the decarbonizing thing in oh, the, man, in the, the before intake. and after was wild. There's a, there's a big difference in the before and after. Um, they fixed a leaky valve cover gasket. Yeah. They actually put an entirely new valve cover on. Do well, you what see I that? learned today is that the valve cover is integrated with the uh, crankcase breathing valve. Mm. So the thing that recirculates, you know, unburnt um, oil back into the engine to try to burn it before it goes out out the exhaust pipe oh. if you get like the if if the valve cover starts to leak it can start to damage that diaphragm and then you can actually get oil going into your intercooler which oh. we did have a little of oh. so that's why i think they were just had to replace all that whole system at once because mm. it's just easier when you're in there doing that and they realized that our diaphragm was a little bit perforated so like okay let's fix this too yeah the uh the previous owner of the car had done some preventative maintenance yeah. the water pump had been done the what's the other thing that they did uh, water pump, which is a known fail point on the 135, had been done. I don't know what the other ones were. I think the EVAP tank, is that one? So, yeah, some, we have a new something one of those that, that sat aside. Yeah, something that, that was, done. was done. Yeah, like the la the previous owner did care about this car. Yeah. It uh, was in pretty good shape. Our tech, Ken, today, when he was kind of wrapping up, I said, well, what do you think of this car overall? And he's like, other than, you know, this little bit of surface rust, and he did say surface, like, because this was an East Coast car, mm. but it's not it hasn't penetrated the frame at all. Like it's nothing to be concerned about. He's like, this is a really solid car. Yeah. And now that it has all this new stuff on it, I mean, it's gonna cook. Like all the guys there were excited. They were like, man, we can't enter because we've worked on this thing. Yeah, yeah. But they were jealous that they can't. Yeah, the car's gonna win. drive really yeah. good. I mean, it's it's really like we told them like everything you find, if you find something wrong, like just fix it. Like don't leave anything on there that's not really good yeah you know so so they they fixed a bunch of worn items yep and they did a bunch of maintenance and they used really high quality either oem or better than oem stuff for everything yeah uh i just heard from our friends at hre the new hre wheels are done i have absolutely no idea what they look like yeah they're new design it's a right? new design no one's seen them before they're shipping them here we've got our um from West Coast Tire, we've got uh, Michelin uh, Pilot Sport AS4s. So, as I said, the uh, the the PS4S was back ordered indefinitely, which is a bummer. Um, but I'd rather have a Michelin all season on this car uh, than a lot of other. <laughs> supposedly uh, ultra high performance summer tires not to mention it's october and so i don't want to you know the odds are the math says somebody is going to win this car and have to drive it you know through the through the winter so right. we're not, not delivering it California. with snow tires yeah. but but i'd rather have a really high quality all season tire than a medium or low quality ultra high performance summer tire that might, you know, result in you not getting the use out of the car. Right. Um, so uh, the got HRE wheels coming. Um, and then, of course, this uh, thank you to West Coast Tire uh, in uh, in Los Angeles for supplying us with a set of tires. Um, so you were there capturing footage mm -hmm. while they were doing the uh, the in installation of everything. Yeah. And anything else uh, to note? Um, I mean, two things, what I like about shops like Avis is 
Like they did a good job of looking around just like while it's while you have the car in the air, while parts are off. Like let's look at other known wear points because it's just easier with all the covers off now. It, it's the while you're in there, but like watching them go through that process and they noticed that there were really small cracks in what is called the thrust arm bushing. So it's like, it's almost like a control arm on the 135 that goes forward and has a zigzag like a lightning bolt mm-hmm. and it connects to uh, from the like hub carrier to the front of the car. And the bushing's really big. I mean, it is like, I, don't, I mean, it's, it, it's like the diameter of this coffee cup as far as the, the, the rubber part and had these really tiny cracks developing in it. And they're like, look, let's just, we can press these out now and then we'll just replace it. And it, it took them six minutes to press them out and put them back in. But they've seen cars come in where that crack developed and like fully fell apart and then your steering sucks. Like yeah, your accuracy yeah. sucks. So, you know, seeing them do stuff like that and then, um, I mean, everything went on really easily. And then uh, they clean all the stuff up, like whatever parts they touch, they clean which is nice because you can see what, what work they did. Mm-hmm. So like the radi- or the intercooler, we're staying with the stock intercooler, but after they blasted it out of that oil and debris and other stuff, then they like cleaned all the fittings that go into it. I mean, this stuff looks like it's brand new. Cool. So, yeah, it's really just like good attention to detail. Nice. I appreciate that. Nice. Yeah. So we're going to get that thing back either tomorrow or the next day maybe, and then it's going to go to the body shop where we're going to have the bumpers resprayed and, and refinished. Uh, a little bit of peeling clear coat, have that fixed all up, uh, a little bit of paintless dent removal, mm-hmm. um, replace uh, a, a kind of tired third brake light, yeah. and um, and then we just do a, a full a full detail on it, and then and then it should be ready to give away. And of course, you got to enter uh, to win by what November November sixteenth. Yeah, so we got just over a month left in the in the giveaway. Of course, you can just go to our Instagram and click on the link in the bio. To, uh, to enter. There's no purchase necessary, although straight up purchase is encouraged because that's the whole point. We're, this is not, we've done charity shit before. We'll do charity shit in the future. This ain't charity. <laughs> this, is, this is an enterprise, this one. Um, and, uh, you know, if it goes well, then we maybe find a way to do it again. You know, if it goes if it goes badly, we're not going to give away more cars. But, but, you know, if this one goes well, then maybe the next time it's What's the best Canyon car for 40000 or 50000 or 80000 you know, depending on the kind of uh, the kind of revenue that comes in from this uh, from this enterprise. Uh, we can make a judgment on what car we do next. We we know you guys like Porsches, so it would be pretty cool if we went from a BMW to a Porsche giveaway that would be pretty rad so that would be pretty awesome. we'll see how that uh we'll see how that goes but i mean this is a really nice car we drove it stock and it was totally decent even stock it was fast it was comfortable uh, air conditioning blue ice cold interior the seats were comfortable the driving position was great there's a lot to like about this 135 and with uh with a few choice parts you know fresh freshly freshened up exterior totally fully serviced interior um there is really plenty to uh to like about this thing yeah and uh and i can't wait to drive it when it's when it's done yeah see how it looks what on a these good wheels. Plat- like it's a such a fun platform and a good starting point yeah and then we're just gonna like refine it a little bit it's gonna be good yeah it doesn't it doesn't need much you just do some things here and there and and uh you know, like James May would do, just uh, yeah, just fix it. Speaking of which, I just watched that the first half of the Scandi flick. Oh, it's a good one. Fucking that crash. Yeah, he hit the Spoiler wall. Alert. Yeah, he crashes a car in the first six minutes. Of yeah, the thing. he hits the wall hard as hell. That is a nasty crash. Yeah, and it is him. This is not a stunt. This no, isn't yeah, like they cut to the exterior and don't show the interior. Like James May does not stop in time for a certain intersection and yeah and hits crashes a wall. into a wall at, yeah. a, at a proper rate of speed and he wasn't wearing a helmet which was i mean they were just i don't know you it's, know why yeah. but but they just weren't they weren't on a track yeah and so i mean he he's fine and like they took him to the hospital and he was fine there yeah but it was it was the video is nasty yeah yeah it's not a, it's not it's a big hit yeah and it's a it's a it's a broadside hit yeah, he tried to make a left. Yeah, and so and he didn't make that left, so he hit driver's side. Yeah, because it was a right hand drive yeah. car. Right, and he sorry, hit the, yeah. hit the wall on the outside of the turn hard. It was scary. Yeah, it's a, it was a big crash. It's um, a, but it's a, that's a really good funny um, episode. Like it's it gets if you're only halfway through. I'm, ha- I'm it gets I just finished the part with the towing of the skiers. 
Okay, yeah. The next, so, the, the rest of it is really. I'll watch the second half on the uh, on the elliptical this afternoon. Um, oh, can I? So, you want to talk about the Ram Rebel? What do you want to talk I about? I want to talk about since we're oh this M5 this, thing. Yeah, let's jump to this M5 real quick. So, um, this isn't the same M5 that came in the other day, was it? Yeah, owned by Peter, that guy. Okay, so it wasn't um, look. It didn't look like that the other day. It didn't look like this. Uh, so this M5 is awesome. It's like a dark green. This guy has full dining suspension on it, square stance. He tracks the it. The E39 M5. E39 M5, sorry. Uh, he tracks it. I mean, it's, what a badass. And we saw it in there. I th- I don't know what it was getting done to it, but he took it It's just getting, day like, serviced. To go. So early the next morning, I think, he was driving his Aston, and a friend of his was driving this car, I believe. And this was like 4 a.m. And they are taking an off-ramp, and all of a sudden person driving this just feels this huge ka-chung and the left side of the car like hops up in the air like a foot and they come to a stop and uh and or actually the car was still driving kind of straight so they get off the exit and go to a gas station to look at it and i mean what we're looking at is the left side of the bumper's gone yeah tires flat suspension parts were bent the bumper's fucked um and so they call the police and what they ended up learning is that there's this new like robbery scam happening in Los Angeles. I don't know if it's happening elsewhere, but what these folks do is they will take a safe or a brick or something very heavy and they spray paint it black. And then between the hours of like 1.30 in the morning and four in the morning, they'll put it on the inside of corners, usually at highway exits. And their hope is, you know, someone just exits the highway, no cars around, Boom, you have a flat tire, you hear a weird sound, you pull over to look at it. And they rob you? And then they rob you. And, what? And, yeah. And so when they called the cops, the cops said that they've gotten multiple calls about this recently. It's kind of happening all Did over the area. Did they go back and look at what they hit? They didn't because I, I believe if I heard them correctly from, you know, kind of across the, the garage, the car was still tracking straight, so mm-hmm. they didn't want to park on the side of the highway. and. Now they learn they probably would have gotten robbed if they had. Yeah. Um, or no, actually, I do remember. Uh, they think they hit the, the person safe after the robbers had left. Like they oh. had already done this that night, and then they had left their shit behind, and so there was no one around when they when wow. this happened to the M5. But that's what's going on. So he so they put this object mm-hmm. just outside of the painted lines. So if you cut the corner, you'll hit it. Or they put it in the road. I think it's in the road. Wow. Yeah, because I, I don't think I, I don't I didn't hear from them if they had cut the corner at all. Yeah. But they were just headed up to the track for a track day. But this is allegedly happening. Like, did you know where around. where in town was it in town or was it out in like the desert? No, like it was in of, town. Wow. Yeah, uh, one of the freeway changes. I don't. Remember That's where. fucking crazy. Yeah. So. I don't what, know. Check, check in your what's area. The to take, see what's, what's the takeaway? I mean, the, the takeaway, takeaway is just don't like, hit shit in the road. I don't even know. I mean, but. stay on the outside corner. I don't know, but just if it, just check out crime reports. See if this is happening in your area. Wow. If you are a person who drives between the hours of two and five a.m., most of us don't. But yeah. If you do like, I guess the takeaway that I took is, if this happens to you where you're driving in, on an off ramp and all of a sudden you hit a huge bump out of nowhere that makes no sense. Try not to, to a gas station. try not to sit don't, there. Right. Yeah, don't yeah. stop on the side of the road right there. You know, drive to a safe area that's there's other people around before you stop to look at it. Yeah. Well, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how that works out with your insurance, but you know, if this is how people are robbing people, then drive to a gas station. That's 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 pretty. I mean, it's a risky fucking move. Yeah. You know. It is. How do you know? First off, how do you know you're going to stop somebody that has money that has anything? Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. How do you know you're going to stop someone, you know, you, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a risky fucking move. It's the move. weirdest fishing lure. Because you, you're, you, you're, what you're getting is random people. You're not targeting, it's, you know, it's not like these, you know, these, in my opinion, vastly overblown watch robberies where someone, they scope you at a club and you're wearing a fucking Richard meal and then they follow you and then they get you somewhere where it's quiet, which happens, but it's vastly overrepresented in media mm. how dangerous this is. But, um, but you're, you're, they see the thing that you, that you've got, right? When you just you're what if what if you get to fucking a ninety four Lumina that's like a fucking hoarder, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And now and now now you're you're you just got some fucking shit box on the side of the road full of garbage. I mean, you what know? if you get one of the many RVs? 
you know, in LA that kind of camps out for a couple of years yeah. and has three generators strapped to it using like bungee. Well, you cords. get a generator, maybe, you get a free, or, you get, free generator. or you get a guy who has lots of ideas and probably owns a spear <laughs> and like a bayonet. Well, that's the other one. How do you I know mean, you a guy's not fucking strapped? Very true. I don't know. That's I don't crazy. know. It's, it's a it was a it's a really weird move for a robber. I think it is like, really weird. You get one one shot, one maybe nothing. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's wild. Yeah. It's but smart of it. Was, I mean, I I guess they didn't know at the time, but like, yeah, I'm yeah. very lucky. So yeah, that's I guess good advice. Don't stop there if you can. If the car keeps moving, fucking keep it moving. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, make sure your headlights are working good. Make sure yes. you can see. This but, M5 was in okay shape, but honestly, headlights could you use, could a, use a little buffing. Yeah, the headlights true. are not as bright as they probably once were. That's fair. That is fair. I see a lot of shitty headlights in this town, especially this town because the ambient light is so high yeah. that even if your fucking headlights suck, I see a lot of people in LA drive around without their headlights All on the time. because the ambient light, you know, if you're in the fucking sticks, you know your headlights aren't on. <laughs> yeah. If you're in town, it's so bright here all the time that it's actually easy to either have your daytime running lights or, or no lights and you could drive around and, and potentially not even know. Yeah. I mean, so, and people's headlights get fucking mad, like cataracts, like milky. And it's really easy to polish those yeah. to fix I'm going to do that with for Sarah's car with Vinny. Yeah. yeah. He, Vinny can do it he saw real it fast. He's like, he's like, I'll help you out. Dude, yeah. Vinny can do it like real fast. He's good at it. It's not, it's not hard. Um, but that is very crazy. Yeah. Um, sorry for that guy. That sucks. Um, the uh, do you want to talk about Ram Rebel? Yeah, sure. If, Zach um, drove a truck. I drove a truck. Drove the Ram Rebel GT. So basically, I'm sorry, you say GT? GT. Yeah, this is the Grand Touring <laughs> truck. Uh, the GT is a package. I got to pull up the notes because there's lots of things for it. It's mostly appearance. It's mostly appearance with like graphics and then a cold air intake and exhaust. Um, but it also comes with uh, the cooled front seats which is like obviously what you want because they're amazing and paddle shifters, which are very convenient. But this is, the spec I had was a 5.7 liter V8. It's kind of like a, a TRX with no super shocks, manageable size and no supercharger. Uh -huh. So this does have a locking diff. It's got off-road modes. All the, This one had all the creature comforts you'd expect. It's got like the nice tablet inside that's super fast, heated, cooled seats. Um, the air suspension is pretty awesome. It's that air suspension, so you can lower it to like the load in height uh -huh. and it drops it like a foot. I mean, it's a huge amount. The difference between the low load in height standard and then like the off road height is, a is lot. pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, like pretty noticeable. Uh, so I use it to move stuff, which was like not all that it's capable of. But price wise, I was comparing this to the F 150 hybrid we had. This truck was $60,000 as spec, this Ram. Uh, the F-150 hybrid is 70. That one has more capability in terms of like the power bed, regen, all that shit. But this tows 3,000 pounds more. This tows like 12,000 mm. pounds. So this is kind of like the every person's truck. If you want something that's sort of old school, just like V8 power, you don't need the diesel, but you want all the bells and whistles and comforts and stuff. And like, it looks good. It looks kind of like an off-road vehicle, but it's definitely pretty civil around town. Um, my contractor at mm. my new house drives one of those. Really? It's not the GT, but it is a Ram Rebel and it's a year old. It's at the dealership a lot. This dude drives a lot of loaner cars. Oh boy. He shows up in Grand Cherokees. He shows up in vans. Oh, he man. shows up in all kind of shit. And he's had a lot of problems with this truck specifically. The 5.7 Ram Rebel. Everything from like cam sensors to the fuel gauge now doesn't doesn't has stopped working. He's had like a lot of he might actually lemon law. And this is anecdotal. This is not there's not data. This is one story of one guy. But I happen be, when you're a car guy and people who either work for you or around you have problems with their cars, you hear about you it. hear about it. And so he's asking me about lemon law and all kind of stuff like that. And he's it's not been a great experience Jeez. with the Ram Rebel. I mean, yeah. that's something, it's such a, a bummer that like our job, we get new cars, which is rad. Like we get new stuff and obviously that's very fun, but we don't get that can, like yeah. long-term consumer knowledge because we're going through new cars. Yeah. So we don't know what happens to them after a year or five years or 10 years yeah. until there's like a recall or a giant story somewhere or whatever. Yeah, so, like unless it literally breaks while we have right. it, what are you gonna do? Like, yeah. 
People are like, oh, I had one of those and it's a piece of shit. We're like, okay, well, this one didn't break. So, like, what do you want me to tell you? Like, yeah. I appreciate your experience, but I, 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 that wasn't, it didn't happen to me. And so we're not, we don't have the car for long enough to experience that kind of stuff. I mean, we, we try to objectively and somewhat subjectively, like, review the vehicle based on our experience with it. But if you're thinking of buying any new car, like, yeah. you should look at, like consumer, consumer reports, reports or something. for that yeah. how that brand is doing in the last couple of years yeah and do you know do your homework there yeah so because yeah. obviously it's a dumb statement now but like this truck worked fine for me and it sure. was super comfortable and like and i really like ram's vertical align uh like how their tablet's vertical instead of horizontal because the ford you have mm. to reach quite a bit to mm. get over to that far right setting I mean, everything's really good in this. Like you've driven them. I've driven them. They're yeah. very comfortable and, yeah. and like they're nice to drive. Yeah, they're definitely the nicest driving. Like, except for like Rivian, but like they're yeah. the nicest driving. You know, old school pickup trucks. Yeah, definitely. That independent front suspension and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, my, yeah, my poor contractors really That's, had a lot of problems really sucks. with this. Um, I went to uh, Palm Springs. Drove the Lambo Technica again uh, for for the smoking tire. I, I had driven it for P. Cody uh, before, but I did not have uh, time to make a smoking tire video. Very interesting um, how you know circumstances can dictate experience. Um, when I drove it in Monticello in the cold weather mm -hmm. on a hilly, undulating uh, racetrack. Um, and and back to back with a bunch of other cars, um, I didn't find the Technica as enjoyable as I found it at the Thermal Club um, on a seventy five degree day, hmm. um, and and just by itself. Um, did by you it, not drive the Technica at, at the Monticello racetrack? No, I did. Oh, you did. I did. It was just a weather thing. It was cold, and and I didn't uh, have as much time. I, I I did maybe seven eight laps in it, as opposed to probably thirty laps I did at at Thermal, and at Thermal. Um, at the launch, you know, thermal the their the track we were on was I don't know south or something, but it's it's perfectly flat. Mm -hmm. It's dead fucking flat. It has some open radius and some 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 closed radius and a couple chicane type corners, but it is it's fundamentally flat as a board. Uh, whereas Monticello is very undulating. A lot of the you've over over crest and and so um, I. Uh, I felt more comfortable on the flat track sliding the car around. And that's that one sense. thing that it does really nicely, actually, is you, it is very nice to slide. And I'm not even talking about like giant Chris Harris slides, but like for a mid-engine car, it the, that really, that steering, that really one-to-one -one steering ratio that they've got there, the the... That well, this gets the steering from the from STO, the STO. Right? Yeah, and, it's a complete engine, STO yeah. powertrain, right? right? So it's got the rear wheel steer, the um, super brakes, the super brakes. It's got the the fixed steering ratio. It's got the fast gearbox, the the fastest gearbox, same power, um, and it's actually it's it's thirty five percent more downforce than the regular Huracan even looking mostly like the regular Huracan. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, without a giant wing on the back. It does have a, a low profile wing on the back, but not that like crazy one that the STO has. Um, it's 20% uh, less drag and 35% more downforce than wow. the regular Huracan. Um, and it and it, yeah. you know it and it's it's stout. It's a fucking tough car. It's it was a hot day. These cars are running over and over. You could beat the balls off them, um, but they're very nice to, uh, to 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 slide around a little bit and to to make them move. It's not meant for the best lap time. It's meant to be fun, you know. So with less the less downforce than the STO and. Um, and and all the powertrain stuff, it's it on a track, it's it's really set up for fun and and engaging with you know on a on a level that's more than just white knuckle kind of lap time. So it's really fun to you know set it under braking and like you know get the back out a bit. It balances well um, on a slide and and you can you know feed the power back in and it, and it's and it's not like a crazy handful. It's it's fun. 
Um, when I drove it back to back with the GT4 RS and the Z06, um, I, I, it was not as fast as the Z06 for sure. Um, and the GT4 RS is so balanced um, that it's, uh, and also very comfortable. I, with a helmet on, I'm a little kind of crunched down in the Lamborghini. And so getting in and out of it, especially with a helmet, you know, it's not, it's not great. And that kind of tampers the whole experience, especially compared to the like perfect ergonomics of the, of the Porsche. Mm. But, um, but by itself, if you're not doing a comparison test, it's very, very fun, makes good sounds. I have I have a video that you'll you'll probably like. And this seems like if you're gonna buy a Huracan, like a new one, this is yeah. the Huracan I would get. Cause, yeah, because the steer, everything about how, driving the STO was magnificent. Yeah, it just like the just rear like is a hard and it looks a little bit too uh, extroverted on the outside for me. Yeah, and, and now you know, and this the bare carbon that. seats you don't right. really need. These seats are perfectly firm and fine yeah. and um but it's with a helmet on it's tough to my neck got a little uh, if you're if you're tall it's not great with a helmet but um but it's still it's a lovely thing and it's got uh there's a reason they're selling fucking so many of those <laughs> the uh, uh, we learned that uh 2021 was the most profitable year ever for lambo and 2022 is on track to beat that and lambo is the most profitable division of volkswagen audi group wow um, and by 2024, all Lamborghinis will be hybrids. Not like there will be a hybrid variant, like they'll all be all, hybrids. All so wow. if you want a naturally aspirated Lamborghini, the clock is running out on getting one. And so they're going to do this, this Technica, possibly a Technica uh, Spider. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if mm -hmm. there was a Technica Spider. Um, there's not going to be an STO Spider for obvious reasons, but there'll be a, probably a Technica Spider, um, and they're going to do the off-road one, the the rally car. Right. Yeah, and that and the rally car is going to be the last normally aspirated Lamborghini, which Whoa. I think is kind of a fun thing. That's a pretty. That, um, that tells you how far the safari movement has spread. Really, like <laughs> right. the, the last celebration of a Huracan. Yeah, is going to be a safari be a basically. Rally car. Yeah. Um, did I? Uh, yeah. It's twenty twenty two pounds lighter than the rear wheel drive Huracan Evo. Um, yeah. I mean that's that's the deal. We have a video coming soon, but in the video I say all of those things and more. But I also get the car to move around on a racetrack, and, and it so, sounds and it awesome. sounds very very nice. And I shout out to Lamborghini for bringing me back my blue notebook, which in a uh, in a in a fluster I left in the car on the track, and uh, so I was without it over the weekend. And um, one of the uh, one of the Lambo racing drivers returned it to me this morning. He raced here. No, he was on his way out, flying out of LAX. Um, lastly, before we get to the Patreon, I want to give a shout out to oh, yeah. my pal uh, Myron Vernis. Oh, um, that's from Myron. This is from Myron. That makes more sense. He, along with uh, well, someone whose last name is Brinker. I don't know his first name, and I'm sorry about that, Mr. Brinker. Oh, Mark Brinker. It says it on the on the cover. Sent us this four volume monster piece. Uh, of uh, Japan's most astonishing automobiles for the collector and enthusiast. It's called A Quiet Greatness. And this is an enormous, uh, Zach, don't hurt your back, please, picking it up. This is an enormous uh, picture book, uh, encyclopedia with amazingly beautiful photography, uh, spec sheets and stories about Japan's finest automobiles. Um, we've, this is just volume, I'm holding volume four, but volume one, you've got Daihatsu, uh, Honda Acura, Dome, Hino, Isuzu, Lexus, volume two, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Mitsuoka, volume three, you've got a lot of neat, volume three is basically all Nissan Datsun, uh, volume four, Subaru, Suzuki, Toyota, and Yamaha. And um, the photography is fantastic. It's not just press photography. There is some historical stuff and unique photography for the book. There's uh, there's spec sheets 
and uh, there's uh, winning rally championship uh, winning tables and uh, awesome. stories about from development and and all kinds of cool stuff and and this is something I'm very happy to have on the uh, on the shelf here at WCCS and I think um, I think we're gonna do a giveaway of one of these on Instagram so uh, one of the boxes. Yeah, a, cool. one of the, one of the box sets. Well, I'll, I'm going to run a giveaway uh, for for these, and and Myron said he would provide one. I, I it's think it's awesome. an expensive book. I bet it is. This, this is a few, this is like a few hundred pounds. dollars. Yeah, the, yeah, the box showed up and it was like really heavy. Yeah, like I thought I'd ordered a printer. It comes with a fifth <laughs> book that's an index for the first four books. Like right. The index is a third the size, but like you need a map to get around. This yeah, thing, yeah, but it's, it's really cool, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, the the paper and the quality and the, the color choices are great. I mean, the design of that cover is awesome. It's like you can yeah. see the pressed wood in the paper and then yeah. just this red circle kind of like, you know, Japan's sun. It's everything about really it cool. gives off really cool Japanese vibes. And uh, Myron has a, an interesting collection of some of the weirdest Japanese yeah. cars around, and so he's definitely the guy to do it. So thank you to Myron for sending this over, and uh, we'll do a, a giveaway on the gram uh, with one of these. We'll have to find a good game to play. Yes. Um, Mileage on the uh, something or something. No, it's got. We should do maybe some Myron Japanese could car. do it. Want to send me photos in an odometer one of his cars? Let's do that. Yeah. He's got some really cool, yeah. really funky stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the Patreon. Patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire Podcast. Plan starting at just two dollars uh, three dollars two ninety nine. Get the show live. Ask questions to the show. Uh, get an ad free listening experience or watching experience. Get an extra show every month. All kinds of things that we could do uh, with the uh, with the Patreon. Not many new patrons recently. It's growing very. Sl- we got a big boost in the beginning, and it's mm-hmm. kind of tapered off. We, I don't, what do we have to do to get more? I mean, we're still growing. It's slowed a bit. Um, I think recession has a little bit to yeah. do with it. We've had a couple people have to leave because of financial changes, mm. and I totally understand that and feel bad for those folks. Um, I mean, I don't know. My my favorite thing about this is honestly, like, you can get the shows early. So if we do a show with, like, last week we did a show with Johnny, and everyone else had to wait a week to hear that show, yeah. but P- Patreon uh, Pro Drivers got to hear it immediately. Like RSS feed, you'll get it in whatever podcast app you want. It, unless the podcast app's brand new and they don't support RSS feeds, that's not our fault. Um, and you can just take it with you and all that stuff. So yeah. people have been very, very happy with the service. So yeah, far. I hope if you, I hope whatever level you're at that you're you're happy with what you have received with the, uh, with the Patreon. Okay, David says, how do you feel about Wait, what? Do you see this F1 race? No, I didn't watch the F1 race. It rained like a mother in Suzuka, like mm-hmm. so much. There was They were talking about calling the race due to time. I mean, it was a huge downpour. Um, but at one point, a tractor came on the track uh, clearing something, and the uh, drivers were still going around, and I believe- Like under caution or racing? Or I think like it racing? was- uh, I, I saw the clip. I didn't watch the actual race, but it was really close. And it was, it, when they got the call on the radio, they said the tractor was just on the other, uh, just off the track on the other side of the curbing, and it was not. It was on the tarmac. It was so rainy, man. Like, you couldn't see it until you were like 20 feet from the tractor. So I think- Well, that seems like a bad idea. It was, yeah, it seemed really dangerous. Pierre Gasly came into the pit and was, you yelling about it. Um, so David's question Did is, anyone hit the tractor? I don't actually know. I should look. Because this guy in 2014. Yeah, Jules did Bianchi did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, but did... did um, uh, I don't know if anyone hit the tractor. I didn't see that. Um, but it's just based on what Zach said, it seems like a poor decision was made. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't watch the race. I didn't know if they were following the rules, if they broke the rules or not. Here, I can pull up this clip. Um, Pierre well, Gasly, if you're wondering why he was pissed, here's why. Uh, okay. Uh, there you go. Oh, is this it? Oh, it's a link to a link to a, a link. link. It's the link fee. Okay, here we go. If you're wondering why he's pissed. Oh, wow. Oh, that's that's, that is photo, tough to see. It's just a photo, but that is very tough to see. And there is... So how far? I mean, how the far truck, do you think the tractor is tractor. on the yeah. racing line? And the tractor just has two little red lights on the back of it. I don't really know what the tractor's doing, but it doesn't. That seems sketchy. Real sketchy. In that kind of visibility, I I'm not into that. So yeah, 
I, I I'm Team Gasly there. I like Pierre Gasly actually, and uh, that's pretty fucking crazy. It seems like from the comments that no one warned Gasly that the tractor was on track. So I don't know. Maybe the stewards didn't. Um, speculation. I didn't watch yeah. the race. The race was at one o'clock in the morning, and I saw they were under caution. I was like, I'm going to sleep. But <laughs> I can understand why he was just upset yeah, and afraid. That sounds pretty shitty. Yeah, that sounds sketchy. Maybe that don't do that. Uh, Murray uh, says, "Will the 135 I get a stereo upgrade? No, we'll get a bazooka too. Uh, it's got a Bluetooth adapter. It's got that. Yeah, the stereo sounds fine though. The stereo sounds fine. I don't. Uh, if, if I isn't it like? Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I mean, it's that doesn't help you drive in the canyons. No, the one it works. It works fine. Yeah, the one that's there. Get your own upgrade." Uh, Andrew Stone, have you seen the allegations around Tommy F. Yeah. Uh, I did see that. Um, I don't usually like to comment on this stuff before knowing really anything about it, but apparently he had a business partner. It was a silent business partner, and um, and apparently they were running car giveaways like, like we are, mm -hmm. and apparently he was not paying the money to his partner. I don't I don't I don't know how much of that is is true. I'm sure there'll be some kind of well, I'm not sure. There might not be any court case. Who knows? There might there might be a lawsuit or a court case. I I don't know. Um I don't I don't know Tommy very well. Met him once with at that thing with Ferretti back in the day, the 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 YouTuber like Project Car Showdown and then he came on the show and he seems to know how to build a skyline and that's really all I know about him. I don't know anything about his business or his business yeah, partners. I don't either. So I, I hope it's I hope it's not true. It sucks to find out or to to hear that someone might have been stealing from someone else. But like I have no idea if it's true. And like I don't you know I don't even have I don't like have his phone number or anything. Like we're not we're not particularly close. Um, I hope it's not true. But if uh, if it is that. Sucks. You shouldn't steal from people. Yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know the details. Yeah. Um, I've I've heard the same things you've heard, and I just don't know enough about it to want to comment. And it would just be speculation. So. Yeah, Angbar says, uh, "What are some alternatives for a weekend car to an E46 M3 that give you a driving experience, but with less upfront costs or down the road repair costs?" G35, G37. I mean, those, you know. Any of the Nissan products that competed, they're slower, but they do a pretty good job, and they're more robust. Yeah, um, I mean an E36 M3. True. I mean engine simpler. Yeah, I mean you could get a, a 330Ci with a ZHP package, and that gets you, you know, a lot of the way there with uh, the M3 suspension um, or most of the M3 suspension, um, but with a more uh, standard. You know, engine that doesn't have some of the racy bits on it that can be very expensive to maintain. If True. you wanted to be in the in the BMW family, I mean, you know, or even, you know, even like a like a Mustang GT. I mean, even like a twenty, yeah. you know, a twenty like uh, even any Mustang like a like a Coyote powered Mustang GT with the right suspension setup. You know, will be it's pretty, a lot of the way pretty there. good to drive. A I lot agree. of the way there, or a Camaro SS, you know, one LE. Um, Great car. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. Th that's not the things that I like about the E46 M3. The things I like about it are the size, the shape, the sound and feel of the engine. That slick inline six. You know, the little bits of nuance, the fact that it feels screwed together really well, mm -hmm. even though there are maintenance issues with it. Ergonomically, um, it's really good, which I, I, the Mustang feels big and the Camaro is hard to see out of, et cetera. But yeah. um, the, those are really solid cars. Yeah. I mean, um, Z3 3.0s, you know, are pretty fun. Yeah. Z3 Coupe would yeah. be cool. Um, E30s, you know, a well set up E30 with the right 325 IS with the right suspension. And I mean, we, if it's a weekend car, like, I mean, two things. One, the prices of E46s right now, especially good clean ones, is crazy because they've, they're starting to hit the appreciation thing, even with the recession and whatever. Uh, Caymans, like Cayman S, you know, what, what gen, like the 20, 2009, 10, 11, like those are similar price point. And they're really good to drive, and I think they're a little bit more robust. 
Yeah. Um, Brian Lewis says, have we thought about trying to enter one of Cletus's Crown Vic races? Yes. He, we have, and he keeps... We'll wait the call. He keeps asking me, but he never asks me far enough in advance. I've always, every time, he's asked three or four times, he's invited us, he's always been really nice about it, and every time I've got a fucking gig. Every time. It's... And usually the gig is something where I'm making a lot of money. And so I don't want to give it up to pay money to go to Florida or wherever and, and do a Crown Vic race. It seems fun. I, it does. I get it. And I saw the the Top Gear segment. I mean, they, they fucking filmed Top Gear, on, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, I think Chris won the race he was in. Holy shit. Um, I gotta watch that segment. Yeah. I, did, I just, he posted it on Twitter. Um it was like three days ago. Oh man, okay. So uh, it it was it was pretty cool. Um, it looks like fun, you know. It's fucking shitbox racing. Shitbox racing is great, um, but I just the scheduling has not worked out so far. Uh, Kurt says, "Would Corvolt be a better name than E Ray <laughs> for the upcoming hybrid CA?" That's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Corvolt is pretty good. And it's on brand for them. What it would be you know? is a great license plate. Yeah, it would. That's a good custom custom plate for sure. Um, E-Ray? E-Ray's not that bad. I mean, it's, I've, Stingray, I've heard, I've like, heard yeah. worse. I mean, Stingray. What, that's like, what, I mean, E-Ray. Yeah, no, I know. But, worse. like, what what is in a, 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 like, a, is there a Stingray that, like, shocks you? No, there isn't, right? Like, there's not, like, the, what's the electric, like electric eel? eel. Right, electric E. Uh, well, that doesn't really work. That would work. That would work for ELR. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would work. Yeah. That would have been the, uh, yeah, the license yeah. plate for that. Oh, that would like be good. Eel. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, I think I, I don't. Good, man. E Ray's not as bad. I like Corvolt though. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Christian says, "When do Ionic Six press cars get to America?" I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, I'm. I I think that car's weird looking. The Ionic Six. Yeah. Let me see. I like the Ionic Five a lot. The Ionic Six looks to me like a worse uh, Elantra N. Oh yeah, um, like that's a weird looking car. Yeah, yeah. That that front is very strange to me. Yeah, I I I don't. It's like the EQS, but worse. I, it's got more angle going on than the EQS, which I appreciate. But it it's like I feel like they're. They're even. Yeah. You know, they're both losing that yeah. contest. It reminds me, it's like or a modern Tatra. It. Yeah. Right? The, back, the back is oh, so weird looking. So droopy. Yeah, the back, they kind of took the EQS and then added a bit of the... Um, uh, the Mercure? Uh, kind of, like, yeah. It's the just, double tiered There's too wing. much happening. Yeah. Um, it looks weird. like the guy in this photo is not particularly stoked on it either. He's, it almost looks like a rendering of him. Yeah. <laughs> Like he's not profile here. Uh, I, I, hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's very aerodynamic. That seems like, and it might drive great. I don't know, but the Ionic Five is such a design success. Yeah, it looks so cool. This one just doesn't. This do looks it like for it me. was designed by both committee and and like AI. Like yeah. I'm sure it's very efficient <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like yeah. in the canopy. It looks like one so of those vertical. AI artworks. It's like draw yeah. me an aerodynamic car. Draw me an aerodynamic sedan that has enough room in the back seat. That someone six foot five can fit in it, but also is very slippery and it's electric. And they went, and it's like that's yeah. what you get. Yeah, it doesn't it's look weird. great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I we don't. I'm not sure when the press cars are coming. Mm -hmm. But I have not. It's not the kind of thing that uh, that I'm interested in. Uh, JD says, what other interior fabrics would you like to see automakers use more regularly? The corduroy in the Heritage 911 and the tweed in the Bentley look incredible. Cashmere, baby. I'd oh. love a fucking cashmere interior. That would rule. Like on the door sills or something, or not? Yeah, sill, like yeah. the like yeah, like the door, door the door, door uppers something would be that's great. Not high action area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cashmere would rule. The wool um, that um, Volvo uses mm -hmm. is great. That should be in more more cars. I, think I love that I've Aston Martin too. interior that felt like a sneaker. Remember Which that one? one? The, it was the V12 Vantage S. It was like orange and gray. It looked like a fucking oh yeah, like a Nike, like like a, like a pair of Jordans almost. It was that was pretty funky. I'm into that. I bet some cheetah, fucking full, full cheetah. The fastest cat. Uh, JD's not wrong though. The, yeah, 
the uh, the corduroy in the Heritage 911. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, that's re- that is a very cool interior. Um, tweed is a great choice too. I, a tweed and a Bentley is very classy. If you did tweed with like the suede patches, like almost like the like, leather like elbow a professor's patches, coat. yeah, professor's coat would be would be kick ass. Yeah, yeah, just more fabric, mm-hmm. like fabric is cloth. Just, cloth. Yeah, I'm, sorry, yeah, like cloth. there's cl- lug. Well, obviously fabric and cloth. Like luxury cloth is underrated. Like there's so many luxurious cloths that they use in clothing. But it's always about fucking leather when it comes to interiors. But, like, bring back some cloth. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the whole, like, as we move more and more eco-friendly away from leather, that will we'll all benefit because we're going to get these awesome luxury Maybe. cloths back. Yeah. That would be awesome. Uh, oh. <clears throat> that was a response. Oh. Josh J., uh, we're always talking about how much we like one-pedal driving in the electric cars. It seems like it would cause a traffic nightmare if every person's car is immediately braking when they lift off, especially since we know one set of brake lights coming on has a ripple effect in highway traffic. You know, um, I mean, that does seem like that, but I'm not sure how... I've never paid that much attention to how brake lights are programmed vis-a-vis one pedal driving. Um, I do know that when you're using the one pedal driving on, the, you you don't really lift off the same way. Like if you're not using one pedal, you take your foot fully off the accelerator more frequently than if you're using one pedal. If you use one pedal, you you add or you subtract, but unless you really are coming to a stop or slowing down, you don't take your foot off like right. it doesn't you change your 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 foot habits and i also i'm not sure think, at what point the brake lights come on that's what i was going to say i don't know if the brake lights come on with regen they so do they do they do yeah they do but i don't know when right. i don't know like the faster you're going the more the the less effective one pedal driving is so you still get quite a bit of coasting it's like if you, if you are, uh, if you're if you're using one pedal on the highway and you let off the accelerator, it's the feeling is very similar to being in sixth gear in a manual car and letting off the accelerator. It it draws the car down, but it does so at a lower rate. Whereas if you're going thirty and you let your foot off the accelerator, it's kind of like being in second gear in a manual car and letting your foot off. It it engine brakes. Or, or motor brakes, whatever, regen brakes, more effi- effectively at right. lower speeds. So I don't know. Like we may have to do a, like an experiment should, where you yeah. follow me around and we'll have radios and I'll and you can tell me what happens. Like I don't. I've never watched my own car. Yeah, uh, we should totally do that because if the lights stay off for a little while, I think it would help traffic because I think they do. It doesn't have that effect of telling people behind you like I'm slowing down. I mean, they do because you don't. Bit. Otherwise, you would see electric cars with their fucking brake lights coming on Going at the crazy. weirdest times, yeah. and, and you don't. Like I get the theory. The theory of what Josh is describing is sound. Yes. You wouldn't want cars with their brake lights on all the time. But that is not what the reality of the roads are here in the city with the with a high population of electric cars. Yeah. So we, I think you're just gonna have to drive around behind me for yeah. a little bit Let's and do let it. us know what happens. We'll we'll try that and we'll come back to you uh, on a later crew show. But I, I I think that's a good one. Um, Andrew N has an E46 M3. Bought it new. Just hit a hundred thousand miles. But it has the a uh, it has the SMG experience, and he doesn't like it. Uh, should he swap it? Should he swap a manual, or knowing the post 100k miles maintenance bills are on the way, considering getting a 997 manual? Um, I mean, a manual is much much better. Yes, in the M3. And an SMG to manual is a relatively affordable swap because you don't have to change the gearbox itself. Right. 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 What does it cost to do that swap? Uh, shops I've I've seen a range from like two thousand to thirty five hundred, basically depending on what shop where they're located and probably how good they are. I mean, that's not a lot of money, and frankly, you'd probably get that back at the other end of the of the equation. Probably. I mean, a manual a, a manual M three, even if it was converted using factory parts, 
is definitely going to be worth twenty five hundred bucks more than an SMG one. Yeah, and, you know, so your that money you spend on that car now, you'd get it back eventually. I mean, if you like everything about the car except the transmission, and I understand why you're not really big on the transmission, like it will change that the character yeah. of that car. Yeah. Should, but what you should do is find a friend or, or someone on a forum that'll let you drive their manual one for a little bit to see if that gives you what you, to, to that'll let you know if what you really want is a change in transmission or if what you want is a different car, I think. Because you might be more interested in a totally different experience, like a rear engine Porsche, you know, a car from a different OEM, um, that will give you more of a change than just yeah. changing the transmission. Yeah. Chris Navio says, will Porsche increase the displacement in their GT cars um, if demand and others can get to 4.5? It seems like Porsche could easily do a 4.2. Um, I don't know. I mean, I... Uh, who was it? Does demand somebody it has board huh? out? Do they what? sleeve the block when they bore it out? Like, do they? I don't, do I don't okay. know what the fuck they do. I okay. have no idea. It it. Someone asked Preuninger about larger displacement engines, and he said no. He was not a fan of them, and I don't know if that's because they can't rev as high. You know, my my four point five is does not rev to nine. It revs to eight. Um, so the 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 red line isn't really increased over the standard engine, um, and I think getting to nine was a very big thing for Porsche. They wanted yeah. to go to nine. So, um, and and I'm not sure. Um, although demand builds 4.5s for rate for actual race cars, you know, I I'm not sure how that displacement affects Porsche's factory durability cycle. I also know it doesn't run on 91. You know, you can put 91 octane in a GT3, and it'll run. It'll run just fine. Right. The although interestingly, I've heard um, from multiple people that speedsters need octane boost. Oh. Speedsters, the 991.2 speedsters run like shit on 91, and they have to put. I don't know why. If you don't have 93. Then. Uh, yeah, they and everyone puts octane boost in them. I don't know why. Um, but my car has to run on 98, so Porsche certainly can't do that. Yeah. Um, it also might affect, I don't know this, but they have a huge racing program they have to support, mm -hmm. and those blocks need to be compatible with the rules and yes. the DOP of whatever, GT racing, et cetera. So it, 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 there's a lot of effects making a change like yeah, that. Yeah, the GT3 is a is a homologation car, mm -hmm. and so it's got to be, you know, whatever the rules are. So I think there's probably good reasons why they don't, but I'm glad there are people that do. <laughs> And my car being a street car, uh, I, I have no concerns about durability. Uh, if if an engine's going to break, I'm not going to be the guy who breaks it. That's just, I don't drive like that. So, um, a, 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 Akvin King, AK, AK Viking, I don't, I don't know. Oh, man, it's Alaska Viking. I don't really, AK VKNG. Oh, Alaska, Alaska Viking, Alaska Viking probably. probably. Yeah. Uh, I'm considering a Volvo XC90 purchase, taking European delivery. Volvo's deal seems almost too good to be true. Know of anyone who has done it? I don't know anyone who's done a Volvo European delivery, but Sweden is lovely. Yeah. And if you're taking, if you're going to, if you've ever thought about going to Sweden, fuck yeah, do European delivery. Do they have really amazing roads. Yeah, it's the roads are great. Gorgeous. It's beautiful. Yeah. The people are really nice. The food's really good. The hotels are cool. The design is great. You could go visit Koenigsegg while you're over there and get a tour of Koenigsegg, which do they, they do offer. Um, but uh, And the XC90 is lovely. A great car. Yeah, good I don't car. like the base one. Like, I rented one once and got, like, a base base one, and it was mm, not great. But the higher-end the higher end ones, like are we really have in the nice. press fleets, are really, really nice. Yeah. Great cars. Um, David Christeski. I think that's right. Love my 86, but I'm relocating to Germany near the Alps for two years and need to sell. Looking for a suitable alternative around 50,000 that will be fun on the Autobahn and in the Alps. Uh, 981 Cayman S, BMW M2, Alpine A110. Uh, 
recently rented a Porsche Carrera S for four days, three days, and wish I had more budget. I mean, the the M2 and the 981 uh, Cayman S are excellent choices. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like, I love Caymans a lot. I think they're they're really nicely balanced cars. Yeah, I mean, they're great. Uh, I like the M2 in this. I, I don't know what your life is going to be like in Germany. What I like about the M2, obviously, does back seats mm-hmm. and folding seats. So if you need to. If you ever need to drive more than one person around in Germany, you can do that. Whereas the Cayman, you can't. Yeah, so. and I don't know if you could. I don't know what you could find, but a uh, an Alpina B3 Touring, which is the wagon, That'd will be, be all wheel awesome. drive, turbocharged, uh, very fast, very cool. Having just been to the factory, I'm now on like Team Alpina. Yeah, and those shits are dope. I would fuck with that. Um, the what else is there? Anything else that would be nice i mean uh c63 s is probably still too expensive the s3 audi s3 i mean gas is fucking crazy expensive in germany and i don't Uh, know about yeah cost of life but like the m2 and the cayman like the fuel economy is like fine like they're reasonably efficient but like the s3 when you're not on it it's like really fuel efficient and also goes See, pretty fast. That I mean, that is definitely something to consider with yeah. everything happening in Germany. Yeah, uh, the gas was like the equivalent of like eleven dollars a gallon when I was in Germany like a month ago, and so you know something that's a little. So the S three gets is rated at twenty eight highway. That's pretty good. That is pretty. What good. is a Cayman S? A nine eight. Uh, See a seven one eight Cayman S, has with the four cylinder, probably gets better fuel economy. Um, Ren lists, uh, well, let's see. Fueleconomy.gov says that the Cayman S gets 29 highway. Oh, wow. How about that? a little bit better. Yeah. And how about let's that? see what the BMW M dose. Oh, the M2 is going to be like 23. Uh, yeah, it's 20, rated 23 highway. Yeah. That's, that is a big difference. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, like, you go Cayman. Cayman yeah. is pretty good, but the 718 might get even better fuel economy with the four cylinder. Um, then and you have to listen to that. You know, I don't dislike it. I've I've had a great time driving the four cylinder Caymans. Actually, worse. Uh, worse. Twenty five <laughs> highway. No with the way. Automatic. Really? Yeah, uh, really? EPA estimates the Cayman. Oh wait, that's the S model. I'm sorry. Yeah. It got well, lumped the, in. He, he said S, but. Oh yeah. So well, that's seven one eight S model. So yeah, go nine eight one Cayman. Yeah, that wins twenty nine miles per gallon. How about Good that? Sound. There you go. That's a base Cayman though, not the S. What? Which? The 981 Cayman was a base or the S? Oh. Uh, 29 might have been the base. Oh, uh, I think it's probably the base. Although the base Cayman, still very fun. Wait. Got one as a press car back in the day with a stick, and it was very, very nice. I really enjoyed it. It's, um, I mean, it's going to be the 20s. Yeah. All right. It's just, anyway, something to consider is that gas is crazy okay, so expensive. Okay, fueleconomy.gov says the 2014 Cayman S mm-hmm. gets 29 miles per gallon. Wow, how about that? So that's the S. Okay. So if you if you drive it nicely. Go Porsche. Oh, that's awesome. Very efficient. Uh, Bobby Reed, or Red, R-E-A-D, says, I've run a Lemons team for five years. At races, I drive and work on the car. What watch would you recommend for track duty? Uh, chronograph function would be handy, uh, as would durability and affordability. Affordable like chronograph. I mean, G-Shock is like, yeah. I mean, that's you. You could fucking destroy a G-Shock, and that'll. I mean, that'll, if you're wrenching on cars, like I want something that can't scratch. Yeah. Because it's gonna get oil on it. Like, mm-hmm. can I scrub it with a fucking sponge and yeah. soap later, and it's not gonna damage it? The carbon fiber G-Shock is uh is very light. It's like 26 grams. Might be the lightest watch ever made, I think, and I have I have that thing, and it's it's great. Um, also, the uh, the Cassie Oaks, those are cool. It looks like a royal oak. It's like a hexagon. Um, the nickname is the Cassie Oak, and uh, you you'll understand why when you see it. They're very cool, and they have a they have a chronograph uh, function. Um, Seiko's, which I love for almost everything, they don't, they're like, they're divers and stuff. They don't really have a chronograph that I love. Um, but uh, let's see. I mean, if you have a little more budget, you've got stuff like Bell and Ross, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's probably 3500 bucks. Um, has a nice chronograph. Um, they have a couple different nice chronographs. 
Uh, man, I don't think about chronographs very often. But if you're if you're really wrenching on cars, Zach is right. A G-Shock is where it's at. Um, Jake says, now that I've had time to ride my CX-500 Turbo, would I say the cost to get it back up on running were, was worth it, or would I kept it have kept it parked knowing what I know now? I think it was worth it. I think it's fun to ride. I think every time I take it out, someone comes up to me and talks to me about it and says it's how cool it is that I'm riding it, that they haven't seen one in so long. I mean, literally, like, a couple days ago, like, two kids in a G37, like, rode up next to me with a phone and, and were, like, videoing me riding it and giving me thumbs up and stuff. I mean, it's a really neat piece. Um, given that I'm supposed to ride it once a week in order to keep all the seals and shit good and the carbs from getting gunked up with our California gas, um, I probably will have to take it back to Iconic and have them do the brakes. If I really was just gonna ride it a couple times a year, the brakes are probably okay, but they're not good. Like the pads and rotors are definitely worn. And I didn't ask, it's not like Iconic, like it's not like I asked them to do it and they didn't. You know, I, I told them like, Make it safe to ride, get it running, you know, so I can ride it once in a while. And the budget started to get a little crazy. And um, and it was only when I picked it up and the guy was like, you know, you got to ride this like every week, right? And I was like, shit. Yeah. So I figured there would be something. And so when I when I go back, I'm going to have him have them do the brakes. Um, Their photo of it's so cool. There is. It's uh, there. Do it go down. There it is. Um, it's really neat. It says turbo all over it, and it and it's very it is very nice to ride. It's comfortable. The power is uh, more than sufficient. Uh, the mirrors being up high up there are good. It's like it's narrow, so so lane splitting is good. It's it's it not. Just, it says turbo in like you know eight hundred font on the exhaust. That uh, is rules. awesome. Yeah, it's it's cool. And when it once it's warmed, it it rides really nice. I mean, I rode it to. I rode it down to San Pedro to pick up our uh, our media passes, and it was a beautiful ride. It's 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 a really nice thing, but um, the the brakes are fucking toasted, and so I really would like to. It doesn't need an upgrade; it just needs new pads and rotors, and so I'll probably take it back to Iconic and um, and have that done so I can ride it with a little more confidence. I think. Um, yeah, but it was worth the money, and plus, I, it's got it's got you know I'm now into this bike for seven thousand um, dollars. They very rarely sell for under ten when they're when they're sorted, and a great one is like twenty. So well, I think right. I think there's a lot of value in that in that bike. Nice. Yeah, I just they just dropped off uh, the Indian FTR twelve hundred to for me to ride for a couple of weeks. And it's a fucking cool ass bike. I'm very excited to have a go. Oh, I'll have an Instagram review of that coming up. Um, Light Bias recently flew to Paris, rented a Renault, and drove to Rome. I complained to my host in Rome that uh, <laughs> that through a thousand miles, the only exotic I saw was a Ferrari 456 on a flatbed. And my host said the only place to see lots of exotics in Europe is in Germany. Do you agree, and is the Autobahn a reason for this? Um, no, the economy is. Yeah. <laughs> Germany has a real strong one. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. In France, it's not really uh, much of a car culture. Um, I mean, there certainly are some people that own cars, but that's not really what they focus on in France. Um, it's certainly not with Italian exotics. Um, Germany, yes, the Autobahn, but also a very strong economy. And Italy... Nobody has any money. <laughs> you do not. You don't see. Exi you want to be. You want. You drive a Ferrari or a Lambo through the Italian countryside, and you are the king of the I, universe. I did, and I. I was shocked at. I was twenty minutes from the factory, but the number of people staring and taking photos was was surprising to me. I was like, "Don't you guys see this every day?" No, they do not. No, they don't. They see don't. It all the and time. and if you look at uh, global sales for any of those brands, Italy is right at the bottom. They 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 don't have a very strong economy and. They're not, um, you know, I mean, and I don't mean to like overgeneralize, but a lot of the 
citizens, Italians are not really motivated by capitalism and material shit. They're happy to sit on the back porch and drink wine and eat cheese, and they don't really care about whether or not they can buy a Lamborghini. It's just not that hustler mentality to is not part of uh, part of their culture as much. I don't mean to overgeneralize. I'm sure there are. You are to park them. You know, you, you need like a villa. Yeah, because well, you know, in the cities, it's very tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, it's it's not unusual uh, to to go to Italy and see no exotic cars. It's not not sta- not not out of the ordinary. Uh, Mr. Nailheads, shout out to the days when the podcast opened with a funny old car commercial. Did Hayes used to do that? Yeah, we used to find like you know oh. really old ads and drop oh. them because they're hilarious, especially with hindsight. Oh. so go look at the any ad from like the '60s through the even the '90s. Like there was some really funny stuff. Oh, all right, there you go. Yeah, uh, Aiden Squires, do you let people eat and drink in your car? Why or why not? Yes, mm-hmm. I do, and it's because my. My friends aren't like gross, sloppy fucking pigs. I don't. Yeah, mind. I mean, there's a way to eat in the car where it doesn't get everywhere. Yeah, and sometimes, and we're transit a lot, and we yeah. need to eat because it's like, well, we're we're on a shoot where we literally the only free quote free time we had was while driving from uh, Mojave to the studio to yeah. do a show. We're like, well, I guess we're eating sandwiches while driving cars. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's not it's. It, I'm not eating fried chicken, and I'm not driving know, a McLaren F1 either. I mean, that would yeah. that might change things if the whole interior was suede, Alcantara, then I might be more concerned. But yeah, it's not. So no, I yeah, I, I let people eat and drink in my car. I'm not that. I'm not insane about that kind of stuff. Uh, Bay Area beats LA. Citroen SM or Mercedes six nine as a comfortable weekend cruiser down Highway One. <sighs> Highway one has a lot of like corners in it. Yeah, a Mercedes six nine is probably not the answer for that. It's that's not. like a highway crew. Like that's like driving across Texas car. Yeah, I mean the Citroen SM is great and Super one of the cool. most comfortable things I've ever sat in. Mm-hmm. Um, I would worry about its reliability and finding a shop that could possibly help you with that problem. That's my concern about it. Yeah, but I mean, assuming they both work, yeah, I'd go Citroen. Yeah, because that suspension, the magic suspension is funny because you'll be on throttle, leaving corners, and it'll be stiffened. But when you go in the corner, if you're off throttle, remember it softens up. Oh yeah, so that might be car's interesting so for hundreds car, of corners. That car is so weird. I'd go, I'd go Mercedes six nine. It's right. big, but I, I would do that. Okay, uh, Jason Dar, will you be at Formula Drift this weekend? No, no. Uh, and can we expect more FD drivers as guests in the future? Um, only if they have very big audiences of their own i mean they they don't they don't really bring in the numbers i mean we like talking to them but mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of times they just don't bring in the numbers adam lz has an open invite when he's in la i, I like adam i've hung out with him a bunch he's cool as hell um but but a, a, you'd be surprised i mean even the big name guys they don't really bring in the numbers uh thomas hawes do you have a favorite wet weather car to drive um i mean uh, I'm sure I know where the question, like for like sliding around or something. I, if it's raining, I'm just trying to get somewhere. Like I don't anything that keeps me comfortable and on yeah. the road. Really, I mean, I think the the red lifted E30 that we made with with Musto and then we had for like a year. Mm-hmm. That was it. Felt soundly built and watertight, but it had ground clearance so I could run through puddles and bla- like puddle blasts are fun. And you could slide it if you really wanted to, like something like that—a safari vehicle, basically. Yeah, I, think I mean, would when, be optimal. Where I come, where I grew up in in Westchester, New York, in Connecticut, the the old parkways, the Hutchison Parkway and the Merritt Parkway, they flood a lot. When it rains a lot, they f- just fucking flood, and there's just standing water everywhere. And when I had my H1 Hummer, just going through that shit at forty. And just creating this monster yeah. tidal wave, like that was pretty cool. Like I was, I was into that. That was fun. That's what I did in high school. We used to rain a ton in Santa Cruz, and I would just drive our Grand Cherokee, and just one road was so crowned yeah. that the right lane would be half full, and I would just <laughs> just throwing waves. It was great. Yeah. Now, like now, I just care about like are the, are the windshield wipers awesome? You know, <laughs> like does it. Does it have the right tires on it? You know, I just did a bro a bunch of the P Cody cars that were all on like Cup Two R's in the rain, and I just was like, the whole time I was like, I wish these just had normal fucking tires on them. You yeah, know? the the tires are more. 
important than than the car in in a lot of ways. You know, I I, I love driving in winter on winter tires. You know, otherwise and, it's and just a stress. Test. Otherwise, it's just so super stressful, and the car is like real skittish. And and driving in the wet on like tires that really get that water out of there is like a very pleasant experience. I don't get to see a lot of rain, so I don't mind driving in the rain if the car is is the right you know car. Right. Um, my safari was pretty fun in the wet because um, that car would you could really slide predictably and and in a very fun way. So when it would rain in L.A., I would always take the safari out and hit fucking entrance ramps and shit, and just nobody cared. It was great. Um, but really, it's more about the tires than the car. Have the, if you have the right tires, driving in the wet is nice. Um, oh boy. Let's go to Elliot's question. I've noticed used pricing on final manual supercars coming down a bit along with the rest of the used market. What do you think uh, of mid-late 2000s manual supercars as a forever car for weekend drives, and would you recommend one in particular? Uh, I'm thinking mostly of later Gallardos or F430s, but not opposed to manual R8s or Vantages in that case. I mean... You're not wrong. I don't know about the prices. I haven't watched them, but, and I don't like the word forever because it puts you in a hole that you got to then dig yourself out of if you change your mind. But, um, you know, the modern ish manual supercars are great kind of keeper cars. Um, every car you mentioned drives really good. Gallardo's, 430s, R8s, Vantages, those are lovely driving cars, mm -hmm. um, particularly the V12 Vantage, non-S with the six-speed is fantastic. R8 and Gallardo, same car, uh, R8's got more room. Yeah. I mean, I, I much prefer the R8 to the Gallardo just based on the fact that the, the performance is fundamentally the same, the powertrain is the same, but you have extra space, and all that extra space is in the cabin. Um, I also think R8s have aged better than Gallardo's. Yeah, oh, I agree. They're a pretty timeless design. Yeah. Uh, 430s are Ooh. very stout cars. They're great with a stick. The stick is the pedals and the shifter have a very light throw to them, unlike the, like, for instance, my, for my 328 Ferrari, where the controls are heavier. Um, the 430 controls are very light, almost like a Honda, like a Honda Civic Type R. Steering, too, compared to like the Steering is very which light. Is very heavy because yeah. of the all wheel drive system. Yeah. Uh, 430s have some expensive maintenance bits. They crack headers. It's a weird thing with 430s. Ooh. The factory headers crack. You can replace them with an aftermarket set that usually is a one a one time replacement. Um, but uh, the uh, I mean they're all they're all really really nice cars. And if you find one that's in it's in good condition and you have it gone through before you buy it, so you know what you're getting into. Um, my favorite of that list would probably be the R8. Um, followed by the, the Ferrari. Um, Ferrari 430 manuals, especially a Spider, fantastic. Fantastic car. I, uh, saw, I saw a red F430 Spider just outside my apartment the last night, just parked, and I was like, that is such a cool looking car. Good car. Such a good yeah, looking car. Yeah, they're good car. cars, yeah. Spiders especially are very nice. Uh, two more, Zach, uh, AM87 says, Zach, what was the experience like getting your suspension set up at Carbon by Steve Dynan, and how do you feel about it now? I mean, the experience was very painless for me because they did all the work. Uh, at at uh, obviously, I kept saying, "So what we're going to do?" And then I was like, "Sorry, Ken, what you're going to do?" Like, you know, he's the guy that worked on the car. I mean, they set it up, and I, I've said this before. I'll keep it short, but like, it transformed the car. And I think what it did is it helped educate me on how much suspension modification and adjustment can impact how a car feels the character of the car like those are all things i knew theoretically but i had never been able to do an a to b comparison because if we get a press car that has you know double wishbones and all these other things like i know they feel really good and the turn in's really good but i'm not sitting there with a gt3 rs and then a regular mm -hmm. you know a 911 um, c4 to compare so for me it went it was very, very clear that you can transform the feel and character of a vehicle. And, mm -hmm. You know, turn ins quicker, it feels lighter, all that stuff. Cool. Um, did we answer this question with Johnny? Yes, we did. We did. Yes. Okay, Z06 versus MC20. Yeah, on, yeah, we we answered that one on the last show. All right, that's our show. Are you going to Italy tomorrow? 
Tomorrow I leave at five. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So so do we need another show? No, this goes up Thursday. Oh, okay, Johnny's great. Goes up All right, tomorrow. cool. All right, yeah. cool. I'll try and change the the show with uh, Salika so you can okay. be here because that's. I'll see if I can bump it a little bit. Um, thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you to our patrons. Uh, make sure to enter to win the BMW 135 Canyon Project car at go dot get entered to win dot com slash tst or just hit the link in our Instagram bio. Um, and uh, yeah, be a patron. It's good for you. It's good for us. Keeps the show going. And Zach, have fun in Italy driving Ferraris. I'm sure that will be fucking terrible. Be terrible. That'll be a terrible time. Terrible. Um, I haven't even driven the 296 yet. So you're gonna be the first one of us to to drive a 296. Yeah, I've driven the hardtop. So yeah, I'm I'm very curious. Yeah, the hardtop it... just got here. The the, oh, the pressers. The presser just got here. Okay. Yeah. So I'll try to get myself into one of those. And you can do the spider. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye.